Hello friends, my name is Katie from Eternal Flame and today I am so very excited to finally share with you all a flip through of my 2023 A5 size bullet journal. So if you're interested in seeing that as well as a quick unboxing of my brand new Baron Fake Squire pen, please stick around. Thanks everyone. Before we get right into it, I did want to take this quick moment to thank you all so very much for taking the time to join me today. As always, I very much appreciate your time, and if you enjoy this video, I would so very much appreciate it if you let me know by giving the video a thumbs up and making sure you're subscribed. Alrighty, so I'm going to give you a, I guess, quick glance at what I envisioned for this bullet journal, what I love about it, and then we'll do this unboxing here. Uh, this is actually my second square pen, so I'm super excited about it. So this year in 2023, I will be using a Baron Fig bullet journal. Um, if you're interested in either, either of these products, I will leave it in the description box down below, a link to it. Um, also, just mentioning too that I one of my absolute favorite products from Baron Fig is actually their desk organizers and I believe that they were on sale at the time of filming this video uh, which is really exciting. I was actually thinking about getting myself another set and decided not to because uh, I have all too many things as you guys probably already know um, but definitely keep an eye out for sales. This bullet journal in a specific color and actually I think it's a color very similar to this very exciting and bright like green color here and so I thought about getting it myself. It's the exact same thing. It's the flagship I believe dot grid journal. All right, so I was afraid to break this out and was inspired by one of my classmates. Um, what I envisioned for this journal is for me to have a brain dump space to keep track of how I'm doing working towards my goals for 23. So if that kind of makes sense, I'll give you an idea. I literally dumped all of the ideas that I had, the goals that I set out for um, in the beginning of 23 and did a Q1 reflection. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But before we do, let's just break into this. Okay, so the Squire pen. Oh, guys, like I, I actually really love these Squire pens. I've already cut it open. This one's the draft version um, or edition, I guess. It's called draft, <laughs> the draft Squire pen. Boy, that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, Baron Fig, I believe, is actually local to New York City, which I love as well. Um, but yeah, so love the packaging here. You can see it here, even to the detail of the top and the bottom. They have their little logo here. And super, super, look, like, just look at this. It's just... <laughs> It's so easy to open, so beautiful, and it's essentially these little squiggles that look like writing um, and journaling, which I think speaks to probably all of us here. <laughs> and you can just see this close up. So this is the packaging. I love the pair of like pink and navy blue, so sweet. And I believe that they're actually either going to release or already did release um, a matching notebook that's navy blue or some type of journal and so this is a collaboration with roxanne gay so you can see here and just more of that scribbles all around and uh what i love about these two so weight wise it's a little heftier width wise it's pretty average it's not too wide um not too thin and you just twist it open love it so much and so i have my trusty little notebook here <laughs> that I keep on my desk for when I need to wipe off my pens or test things out. So just give you an idea of how thick and easy it is and how great the ink flow is. So you can kind of see that quality wise. I would say that this is a much thicker, I don't actually know what, um, is it maybe a one or a 0.7? Um, but I will leave a link to it in the description box down below and see what it is. So to just give you a quick comparison between my 0.38 from Muji of what that kind of looks like. And uh, this is 0.38. So you can kind of see there's a pretty large difference. I'm super excited to be able to actually use this now in my new bullet journal. So I didn't have it when I set this up, but I just wanted to share this with you all. If you're interested in seeing when I set up the, I guess, little pouch that has all of the supplies in it, I tried to pare it down to the absolute minimum, but of course that eventually grew into more than I needed. Um, but anyways, I will leave a link to that in the card section up above if you're interested and um, or check out some of my other videos. Okay, so I love 
this bullet journal. I, for years, have been using and collecting Archer and Olive bullet journals. Um, anyone who's familiar with Archer and Olive bullet journals, they're quite thick. The sheets of paper are quite thick. Um, they have a little bit more in the sense of a pen loop, an elastic band here, um, a folder in the back. Those are all things that you will not find in this. So this bullet journal is very much so a minimal minimalists bullet journal if that makes sense um, because you also only have one page marker here and it's just like this very utility <laughs> a very um, basic I guess ribbon here or page marker which I actually love um, it doesn't fray it doesn't have any metal um, charm on the bottom like Archer and Olive does <laughs> I bring that up because the charm always gets caught in my desk drawer. <laughs> I don't know how. Um, same thing with my Hope and Ichi Weeks, but I thought I'd bring that up. So it's a fabric cover. Um, I don't recall what color I got this in, but I did select it. I got it in the plain dot grid with just their tiny logo here on the back, which I absolutely love. Okay, so as I mentioned in the back, there is no folder. It does have a textured cover, which I will mention here in the front. Okay. So when I set up this bullet journal, um, I didn't want it to look like a planner because I have so many planners for 2023. I really needed it to serve two purposes. One purpose being to really focus my energy on understanding what my goals are for 23. So kind of constantly reminding myself what I'm trying to work towards. So that was one. And then two, to meet the need of I guess this itch I've been having to be more creative and experiment with my watercolors and mostly brush pens, if, yeah, brush pens and pens and things like that, so, and highlighters. So that's what you'll see in here and I'll go to more detail about that in a second. So the other thing I wanted to mention, and I'll just grab it very quickly, is that I use my alphabet stamps from Amazon that I picked up. I will leave a link to my Amazon storefront if you're interested in that in the description box down below. But this is super affordable and I use it in all of my journals. Love this so much. One of my greatest, I think, investments. Um, I'm pretty picky about stamps too. So these are very easy to use. Um, meaning that I don't have really an issue of getting like nice clear um, clear stamps, <laughs> impressions using these stamps. And if, I guess I should elaborate a little bit more. I don't get the edges um, around it when I, when I stamp down and it goes really well with my ink. And then it also, it's just a very clean finish. Um, the only problem here was that because the page is kind of textured, as you can see here, it made a huge difference uh, when it came to using this ink and um, these stamps in this box here. So that's why I've covered it up with some correction tape washi tape and this large large die cut that i absolutely love i got from meg it says you are capable of amazing things which i figured was so applicable i fell in love with it at first sight so i was more than happy to use that in my goals <laughs> goal setting bullet journal for 23. all right so the first thing i do is actually skip this first page in all of my bullet journals because it's always stuck together <laughs> to the cover um so that's totally fine i tried to keep it super simple and actually um, just use the same alphabet stamps to stamp out key in Apricus, which is my word of the year. It is Latin for full of sunshine. Um, so that's what we have here. So I'll just show this to you very quickly. Um, I This was the Altenew Permanent Black that I got at Go Wild. And this is just a, I'm sorry, <laughs> my hands are so hot, <laughs> a stamping pad that I got from an alphabet set from Archer and Olive. So what I didn't love about this ink, I love that it was a permanent black, but it shows pretty boldly through the page. So I've decided not to rely heavily on this permanent black, but I will be keeping it at arm's reach just because, as you'll see here, I made a boo-boo. <laughs> Um, when I was stamping relationships, I actually put a Q down instead of a P. I don't, if you can relate, please, <laughs> please leave that in the comment section down below. Um, but I needed this permanent black ink to actually set on the, um, the correction tape. So that's an example there. I kept it super simple. I just used my old school bullet journaling method of a box for a task, a one 
I guess, crosshatch for started, anything that was started, any tasks that has been completed, I do a full X, and then anything migrated, <laughs> migrated is a greater than sign, and anything canceled is just a simple strike through. And then um, I started to draw some like foliage using uh, my Archer and Olive, I think, calligraph pens here, and didn't love the way it was turning out. So I ended up using some of the supplies I have here. Let me see if I can grab them very quickly on this side. So I actually have my little real tote that I picked up at from the Sticky Club during my last haul, um, but I don't see the pen that I've been using. Ah, here it is. So my pen for this, I've been experimenting with this Sarasa mark on um, that you can get off Amazon. I think I actually got this at Go Wild and took the opportunity to explore this pen in this bullet journal. And I will say I like it, but there are some things that I don't love. I think it skips sometimes, but what I love about it is as um, implied by the name mark on, it actually allows you, it sets, and then it allows you to highlight and of course use brush pens with them. Um, what I really needed was also a pen that would set enough that I could erase over it. So that's what I ended up doing here. So you can see, I didn't finish my floral doodles here, um, but I have one just sketched out. And so a lot of times I'll sketch it out with my pencil and then go back and erase it with my Tombow eraser. And you'll see in this next page here that with the Energel Klena, it actually smudges and doesn't fully set um, and or I didn't let it set long enough maybe. And so I do prefer this pen over the Energel. One thing I'm experimenting with is actually replacing the Energel with this 0.38 Muji, which I also got on Amazon. And um, so far it's been working well, but I haven't experimented enough to say yay or nay, whether it's a, any, like that, I guess, whether for the purpose of, I guess, erasing um, on top of it, whether it would hold up to that. All right, so here on the left, I have the index page. I very simply set up a column for the page and a description. Um, I have a boo-boo here. <laughs> I actually took my wet hands and just kind of rested it on this planner. I don't know why or this bullet journal and um, it was enough. And then I was trying to erase it because I thought it was like a ink mark and while it was still wet and it kind of like ripped the page. So that's my fault. <laughs> but you can see here, I just had fun with doodling and I actually, I think what I did was actually sketch it out with my Muji pencil, use my Sarasa mark on to finalize the lines and then use my calligraph pens to color it in and then use this Muji um, 0.38 pen to kind of create like very fine detailed lines. So over here um, I broke the rest of the year out into three separate quarters so Q2 is where I am right now. I left some space between each of them and I, sorry and if I'm being honest I didn't actually count it out before I started I just really wanted to experiment with this pen when it came to drawing um, April, May, June, like the months out. And then, like I mentioned, I just used my Klena to um, sketch out the dates and the days of the week. So over here is actually where I get into the discussion of goal setting. So to tell you a little bit about where I am and where how I got here, um, I was very fortunate to have taken a class through NYU as part of my MBA program um, in leadership and goal development. That was something that he um, incorporated into the curriculum. And it was actually around the time that I was struggling to set my goals for 2023. Um, I contemplated getting planners such as Moxie Life or Cultivate What Matters um, based on videos I had seen. And I, based on the pricing, <laughs> believe it or not, I didn't um, feel confident in pulling the trigger on either of those options or any of the other ones that I looked into. So I felt very fortunate that the professor actually happened to include this in the curriculum that semester. And his practices and some of the suggestions that he made, some of the things we went over in class helped me to really figure out what my values are and where I wanted to grow. And that's how I determined what I wanted to work on in 2023. On top of that, I um, 
took what I learned and used Excel to develop and organize those goals into different categories. So taking what I started out with in that little Excel spreadsheet, I applied it three months into 2023 into these spreads. I tried to organize it in a way that made sense. So I'll break that down for you. I have six pages here um, broken down into different categories. I have work related tasks or goals in this like gray color using my Tombow uh, dual brush pen. Anything related to school is highlighted in this beautiful purple color because I go to NYU. And um, relationships, I broke up into two separate categories for family and friends in this like, like beige brownish color coffee color and then green is anything related to my immediate family including my lovely animals and my husband over here i have goals related to social media and my personal goals so this looks a little bit different than what i started out with in the year but it made sense when i was putting this together and kind of reorganizing my thoughts after q1 all right so let's just go over those very quickly um so <laughs> I, one of my goals in 23, which thinking back on it, I just, I can't believe that I set such a crazy goal for myself was to get a new job. And um, maybe some of you can relate to this and maybe it's not as crazy as I think it is, but I, what's even more crazy is that I have been fortunate enough to have actually met that goal already in Q1. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. And because of that, I had to adjust some of my goals um, because some of my other work-related goals were related to my previous job. So now they have to be adjusted for it, for this new job. So that's why I took this opportunity in refreshing my goals after Q1 into Q2. So that's what you'll see here. What I tried to do is also integrate, since um, a lot of times the goals that are, I guess, on the left side of the page that are related to work are also integrated with the right side related to school. So for example, um, I have a goal here to learn more about sustainability um, as it pertains to work and I happen to be taking a lot of classes related to sustainability at school. So I kind of try to marry the two sides of the page so they're not so separated <laughs> like, like this spread here. Okay. So that's just touching a little bit about that. Um, for school, I was trying to stress less, make new friends, and enjoy every moment. Uh, in addition to getting a new job, I wanted to start looking into fellowships and building my career, any type of, I guess, leadership development or career development type program, and then also making my last payment for school. All right, going into the next spread here, um, I wanted to spend more time with the ones I love that included my friends and family, as well as my husband and my pets. I wanted to make sure to spoil the ones that I love and work on communication. Um, that also included making sure that I can, or something that I hope to do was to work on being able to send out happy mail um, to show my appreciation for the ones that I love more often and be a gathering space for my friends and family, uh, which includes keeping our house clean so that we can invite people over on a whim. Okay, lastly here, I have social media and personal. So I'll go over some of my personal goals and then move to social media just because this seems kind of silly and I'm embarrassed to mention this, but it's important. I want to wanted to make sure to touch on it. So over here, I wanted to journal more for mental wellness. I realized that in this past year, um, during the times that I wasn't journaling as much, I was kind of sad. I just, I really enjoy the outlet that journaling provides for my mind and my mental wellness, if that makes sense. Um, so I also wanted to be more patient with myself and okay with the fact that I make mistakes such as this relationships with a Q <laughs> and just embrace it and not be so critical of myself, which honestly, a lot of this is quite critical, but for the purpose of continuous improvement and growth. So part of that is accepting the fact that I, I actually really enjoy alone time which probably isn't surprising <laughs> since i spend a lot of my time um kind of cooped up and journaling and, and filming youtube videos by myself and then finally reading more about things that i enjoy as opposed to reading case studies for school and then over here with social media i debated not doing a social media goals list but i think that this is something a lot of people can relate to inclusive of myself so i think it's important to just put it out there and let 
everyone know that you're not alone if this is something that you're working towards. So in the beginning of 23, I set out to grow the channel, this channel, to 10,000 subscribers and I'll be really honest with you, it's been a really slow start or in Q1. So there's absolutely no way unless there's a miracle that I will get to 10,000 subscribers, which is totally fine. But part of the class or one of the classes that I've taken as part of my MBA program was learning that putting saying it out loud, saying your goals out loud and putting it down on paper forces you to work harder towards your goals and you shouldn't allow your fear of failure to hold you back from working towards these goals, if that makes sense. So that was my goal in sharing this with you all. Um, although I am very unlikely to hit 10,000 subscribers in 2023, I'm holding myself accountable and still shooting for the stars. And so I'm trying to, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> always happens i don't know don't know why and don't know who <laughs> i actually don't even know what that is um okay so i wanted to build my instagram page following i guess i wanted to share more exclusive content with you all and find ways to create more value through some other um channels like instagram i created a link tree i started an amazon storefront this year things like that um so that was one one of my goals and so one way to do that is to try to post once a week which i think i've actually been exceeding yay um and then lastly i wanted to find ways to partner with more brands that i love to bring once again more value to you all as viewers Alrighty, so you can see here some very loose minimal doodles here floral doodles and then finally this takes us into our last two spreads so i'm going to skip over and just fully disclose that i have not built out q Two, like my goals for Q2 yet and how I plan on working towards the things that I'm I have set out here and based on my reflection for Q1 okay so now that we cover Q2 and how it's not done yet <laughs> we just basically closed the doors on Q1 and I wanted to take a much needed moment to reflect on the progress that I've made where I've been, where I've been spending most of my time, where I want to grow in Q2, Q3, and Q4. And so what I did here was I just took one of my pens, I'm guessing this is my Muji or my Klena, and I just, just went at it. And you can kind of see that here. <laughs> I just was really critical of myself. Um, what talked about or journaled about what I loved and what I didn't love where I could do better and it was just a brain dump space honestly up top here and then um, I also took a moment here to use one of my stencils that I picked up I think from the paper source on clearance that I've been dying to use and never actually used <laughs> until this spread so it's been probably a year or so um, and so I just used that to create the circle here. I broke it into six different segments that just came off the top of my head. Honestly, it wasn't just based on these goals here. And um, I broke it down into work, school, family, friends, me, and um, money. Based on that, I gave my score, uh, myself a score between one and four, one and four, one and five, depending on honestly, just like the number of um, segments that I could fit here. And based on that, I realized that I was spending a lot of my time working on my work goals, which is what I was trying, it sounds really awful, I was trying not to do in 23. Um, this is really something that I was trying to work hard on to pull back. Um, and it, it sounds bad, but I, I my personality is to pour anything and everything and every little bit of myself into work, but I wanted to find a way to strike a balance between work, life, and school um, in my second year of my MBA program, and uh, I felt like I was not successful in that, as you can see here, which is fine. I give myself a pass <laughs> because I got a new job, and that's part of it, right? I wouldn't have been able to get a new job if I hadn't put so many or so much of my time and resources into work um secondly i think i spent a lot of time and money on me uh which is not the goal I, my goal is to spend more time and money 
and efforts on my family and friends and so you can see that here with my immediate family i felt that there was a lot of room for improvement and so with this criticism i hope to focus more of that time in q2 with the ones that i love and so for school i did pretty like in between 50 50 and over here i <laughs> have a lot of room for improvement when it comes to finances as well and saving. So with that, I came up with a short list of four things that I think would really help moving forward into Q2. And so you'll see that here, if I keep my house clean, I'll be able to host family dinners probably once a month, which uh, would help me with my goal of spending more time with my family, more quality time. And then Taking more trips with my husband would help with building that connection with my family, immediate family, so our dog and him as well. And then also with the communication goal that I have here for us. And then finally, being more creative for me <laughs> was this is an attempt to do that. So while I am sharing this with you all, um, I'm hopeful that sharing my personal goal bullet journal with you all is helpful in letting you know know that you're not alone if you're feeling a little lost every year or through the year um, because i definitely feel that way now i felt that way in the beginning of the year as i mentioned i was just very blessed um, to have taken a few classes that helped mold and or help me to determine what was important to me and what I wanted to work on. So if you're interested in a more in-depth conversation about that process, definitely let me know. Um, so I was hoping that this would be helpful for you, but at the end of the day, another major part of this bullet journal was having this space where I could, without judgment, uh, be more creative with these doodles and my brush pens, um, ex experimenting with different colors and, and things like that. So thus far, so good. Uh, hope to keep up with it. I'm absolutely loving the this bullet journal. Um, I wasn't sure that I would, but I actually love that it's more minimalist and I love the cream color color of the pages as opposed to the archer and olive like bright white i love that it's actually thinner than the archer and olive pages um, because it sounds really silly because if you asked me before i discovered hobonichi uh planners and tomoe river paper it sounds silly to say that i actually find ghosting very attractive like i think it's something that i can appreciate and so this has just the right amount of ghosting <laughs> um if that that sounds so crazy um and without like being too thin so i also think that when i use these brush pens it's so the dots are so beautiful like they're just, just they're still there you can still see them which is really great for when i'm writing these um large block letters and playing around with my brush pens here um overall I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. I really appreciate you taking a very long time today to sit down with me and take a look into my goal setting bullet journal. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye everyone.